Hi, in this market update, I'm going to be talking about the federal deficit and things that need to be done to address it. Hi, Jim Gore from Thor Wealth Management. Well, we all know about the deficit here in the United States, and part of the reason why it is exploding even higher has been a theory called modern monetary theory. And there's some politicians out there are using this in order to encourage more government spending. Basically, the theory is saying that countries like the United States with their own currency are not constrained. Your spending is not constrained by the amount of revenues coming in. So it doesn't matter what the revenue is, you can spend as much money as you want. And this is really showing up in the last couple of years as a very poor economic theory. And it's part of the reason why we do have inflation because we're spending much more than we're having come in. Well, there is some good news and there is a way we can get out of this deficit. First thing that's very important is you look at the GDP, the gross domestic product here in the United States. And you can see over time that the GDP has grown. And that means that the economy is growing. There's only two times that really fell. That was 2008 and 2009. And then we saw a dip during COVID. But the economy continues to grow. And this is important because if we have a growing economy, there is a way to address the federal deficit. Um, and if we don't have a growing economy, just as same as someone that's in a household, if your income's not going up and your debt levels are getting higher, that will swamp you eventually. So we do need growth in the economy. And this is really good news that the United States is still a growing economy. But the real issue is what we are spending. And now you have to really look at the spending. Don't, you know, they throw out $33 trillion and people's eyes, you know, fog over because that's such a large number they can't realize it. What you have to do is look at how much you're spending as a percentage of that GDP that you're making. Okay, because GDP grows up, grows every year, your spending grows every year. So what is that percentage? And here, if you look at this, the percenting, percentage of GDP in a pretty good economy right now is 25%. It's down from COVID levels, right? But it's the highest since World War II. It's higher than at the peak in 2008 and 2009 bear market. So even though we've had a very good economy in the last two years, we're still spending 25% of our GDP, right? Notice there is one red line there. This is the 1990s. This is when we had Bill Clinton as president, Newt Gingrich as the head of the House of Representatives. And we actually saw the percentage that we we're spending of GDP drop about 3%. So from 20%, 21% to 17%. Um, and why is that important? Well, let's look at this chart here. This is the revenue that's coming in. And I'm just gonna highlight that red section there back in 1990s. Revenue actually went up. This is why we had a surplus. We had more revenue as a percentage of GDP coming in than we were spending. We can do it again. But this is very important if you look at this chart here. Whether we had high tax rates in the 60s or 70s or low tax rates, in you know start in 2000 1980s the percentage of what we get in revenue of gdp is roughly 17 and a half percent right now it's at 19 percent, so it's at the high end but keep in mind what is the difference we're spending 25 percent of gdp and we're only getting in revenue of 19 percent. that's a six percent gap that is a very wide gap and this is why we're seeing the deficit blow up. What we need to do is reduce that. In this chart here, as I said, it doesn't matter on taxes. If you raise taxes, you're still going to get the same percentage. Because what happened is you raise taxes so much, people change their attitude for investing or uh, building some things or business. And what happens is you get, you know, GDP might go up a little bit, but you're going to get the same amount of revenue, even though your tax rate is much higher because people make adjustments based on those taxes. That's why this has remained pretty steady at 17.5%. This, so the one way we can really reduce our deficit is bring down the percentage of GDP. That's the key to this. We gotta bring it down to you know, a more manageable level, 20%, we'll still have a, uh, a deficit, but it will be a deficit that won't grow rapidly in the future. But if we continue to spend 6% of our GDP higher than we're bringing in rep revenue, the deficit is just going to continue to compound faster. 
Another reason why the deficit is growing is because of rising interest rates. We have higher interest rates payments that we're having coming out. This is the quarterly interest rate payments. Quarterly interest rates in the second quarter was about $966 billion. This quarter, it's gonna be over a trillion dollars. So rising interest rates is part of the problem. But you have to bring down that spending that the government is doing. Just bring it down to, to you know what you're bringing in revenue. If we did that, we would be in a very, very good shape to bring down interest rates and it'll make um, the economy uh, more sound. Uh, this modern monetary theory has shown that it doesn't work. It actually has caused inflation because the government is printing more money out there than they're bringing in. As you print more money, you do have inflation. And the number one component for inflation, in our opinion, is government spending, and especially spending that's above what they're making in revenues. If you have any questions or concerns, as always, reach out to us at thorpewealthmanagement.com or give us a call. Take care, and I look forward to talking to you in a couple of weeks.